Now we've seen the optimal policy. If I may ask, how can an agent learn an optimal policy from, for an arbitrary environment? So the transition, the answer lies in what we call what? The Q learning. So if you are giving this kind of training information, it is easier to learn what we call the numerical evaluation function based on state action or state action transition. And this state action transition will implement the optimal policy in terms of the evaluation function. Now that you know this, you now see that this evaluation function will look like will be equal to what? Since we are returning the what maximum value of which one now we return the maximum value of what? The action, right? So that action, which is what? Based on the reward of the state action transition, we look like this. So we have ag max, ag max of this action with respect to what? The, the what reward of state action transition. Yes? Yes? So we added to some constant value. Yes? And then we compute the partial derivative of this, of this state action transition. Now, so Q-learning implements this using what we call what Q function. So Q function, as you can rightly expect, is what a kind of an evaluation function of state action transition in which a reward is received immediately upon executing an action A from state S, added onto the discounted word value, right? Such that we see that this Q function will be what now? Remember, it is what? A function of state to action transition, right? So Q of state action becomes equivalent to what now? What did he say, right? It receives a reward of this state action, right? You should understand, yes, that we are actually, we are actually computing what the partial derivative of this, right? And not just the what state action transition. Hence, this will not look like this, it will look like this, because there is a change that is involved, okay, of state and action. Got that now? So if we now rewrite this equation above, this is equation two, if I rewrite equation above, so if I rewrite equation one, now it will yield, it will yield what? So this I can call equation three. Does that make sense now? Now with this, you now see it is obviously clear that we only need to consider each word available action in a particular state, right? And this action maximizes the Q function, obviously. So that is the role of argmax there. Next, how does the algorithm of Q learning look like? I think I will explain. And that leads us to the algorithm of Q learning. So, the algorithm of Q-learning, we can summarize it in two steps. So, we want to say that the aim of this thing, the algorithm is to find an optimal word function. It's learning a Q function that corresponds to learning, finding an optimal policy. So, whenever we talk about Q-learning, we are actually talking about what? An optimal policy. And the key problem is finding a reliable word way to estimate the training values for that Q function, right? Given only sequence of immediate reward spread over time. Now, this can be accomplished through what we call what? Iterative approximation. Now, the goal of iterative approximation is to, the goal of iterative approximation is to find an, an, a, an optimal function V star of what the state, right? Of the state such that that is what the maximization, right? We are maximizing the action. So we can call it maximize A prime now because we maximize this action, right? Over the what? The Q value of what state action transition. Now, if this holds true, 
Now, if we rewrite this equation above, that yields what? That yields what we we'll call what? Q, that is the Q function of state action transition. Will be what now? Will be what? The what reward of moving from state uh, to state. So this is what we we'll have. Okay? So the Q learning algorithm will be summarized in series of four steps. So step one says for each state action transition, comma, so we initialize the table query, table query of what state action, that is Q of state action to zero. Right? So once we initialize this now, we now do what? Observe the current state. So observe the current state and perform following action. Step two. Observe the current state. S and perform the following operations and do. You do this until following conditions are obtained. So I use this acronym SROU, like ISRO. ISRO is ISRO, but this is SROU, which says select. We will see what we select, okay? So we select, we do what? We receive, we observe, and we update. So we select, we receive, we observe, observe, and we update. So if you remember this, you will not go wrong in that. Okay, so we select an action A and execute it. Receive immediate reward, observe the new state, and update the double query. Does that make sense? Select an action and execute it. Select an action A and execute it. So receive an immediate, immediate reward, right? Right? So we receive an immediate reward R. Then what do we do? What do we do? We observe the new state and then we update the table query. So we observe the new, so the new state will be what? Maybe we call it S prime and then we update the table query. So when you update the table query, it will look like something like this, Q hat of what state action transition. So which implies that we now have this Q prime, which is updated what? Uh, which is the updated what? Q learning algorithm. State action will be equal to R, right? Which is what? The reward, yes? Plus some constant value of what now? Of what? Ah, max of what? Max of, okay, max of updated state prime action prime, right? Because we have updated this, yes? And then max of, I forgot, max of Q of state action transition. So that's why we have this max of Q state action transition, right? So therefore, what happens now, we can now say that, we can now say that the state is being updated to the current state. Now, this is actually wrong, okay? Because if I'm saying the current state is updated, the previous state is updated to the current state, the arrow should point in the reverse direction, okay? Right, this holds true provided that what, we have seen this, right? Provided that this gamma notation will range between zero and one, right? Fine. And with this, we will now look at an illustrative example. This is the initial state. Okay, taking some action and moving to the next state. Okay, moving to the next state. Our aim is to find the optimal solution using Q function. 
So let's say when it transitions, so from this state R, when it transitions to the next state, it receives a reward, I think that was 72. When it gets back, it receives a reward of, I think, 66. And when it moves here, it receives a reward of 100. State. So this is my initial state. So it is good, we call it what? S1. And this is my next state. So we can call it now what? S2. Right. Such that if it transitions from state 1 to state 2, that means there will be what? Uh, action, right? For it to move to that, it takes an action. The action says what? A says move right. That's what the action says. So when it moves right, now the updated value remains more or less the same. Now we have 90, 681. So when it goes out, we have what? 90. This is 90, 66, 100, and that's 81. Okay? Now, if you want to apply this formula, now we can actually come up with a hypothesis that says that the maximum error in what? That Q learning is in the maximum error such that such that the maximum error error in what? In Q updated Q of state action transition is equal to what? Is equal to what? We have seen it, right? Now we are talking of maximum. So we remember it with maximum of what? Now, not only a single value, it's equal to maximum of what state action, right? And that is true because you're talking of state action transition here of Q of state action updated minus state action previous, which is looks like this Q of what state action. Okay, now there is no space there. So what we are trying to say is that this, the maximum error in that error will be equal to error of what of this Q updated state action will be equal to maximum error of state action transition in what Q of what state Q prime of state action transition right this one right minus Q prime of state action okay so we take the maximum of these two now this holds true right then we will look into what the last formula after some series of operations it now boils down to what we call what what that the q that it now boils down to what that this value will be less will be again equal to or less than or equal to yes that would make sense that this will be less than equal to that discount factor which we call beta because my gamma and r looks the same Beta of maximum of what? Now, maximum of this state that belongs to the distances. Now, what I will do is, I will say, this is what the state of, state action transition, obviously, but now not only a single state, maximum of state of some number with an action of that number, right? State action transition. And in this case, we take now absolute values of both. Why do we do this? Because in, just in case this value is, negative. Actually, here we are talking of absolute value, please, because just in case the, this one of them is what greater. Now, if we do here predicted minus actual, we might get a negative value, but if we take a, an absolute value of that, it eliminates the negative value. So with this, what it turns out to be will look like something like this, in which we have what? An updated value of what the Q of what state, that is the Q value of state, the act state action updated right now state action updated both so which is this now minus again q value of what ah state action right so this is the updated one and this is the initial one so state and their respective action and this we take again the absolute value to make it non-negative which now implies that we can now write that if it transitions to the next state we now have q value of what n plus one right because it has moved to the next state of what now state action transition again state action transition will be minus what minus what q value minus q value of what state action yes 
must be less than equal to what the discount factor, right? So it must be less than equal to what the discount factor, which we call beta, and then we're actually computing the partial derivative of that number. So we change partial derivative, changing that. And again, we take what? The R absolute value, so which implies that. So with this, we are done with what? The what? The Q value, okay? And then if you look at this, we are, we are going to investigate what? The experimental strategy. So I will explain this. So the experimental strategy says that the Q-learning algorithm does not specify how actions are chosen by the agents. So it doesn't specify, and that makes sense, because even when we choose the number of hidden layers in our neural network, that also is experimental. So in experimental strategies, you don't actually look at what how actions are, it does not look at how actions are chosen by the agent, okay? And neither does it actually investigate Okay, the probabilistic approach of selecting these actions. And these actions with higher Q value are assigned higher probabilities. And but for every action that is assigned a higher probability, we have a non-zero probability. Sorry, I'll repeat again. That Q learning uses a probabilistic approach for, to selecting actions. And actions with higher Q values are assigned higher probabilities. But every action is assigned a non-zero probability. And one way to assign such probability is what? How do we assign such probability? And we wind up with this. And now we assign probability using the function probability of what this action, given that it is in a state, right? Or probability of this action given a state. So assign probability using, so we assign probability using what? Probability of what? What are we going to use? We use a probability of what? Probability of action, right? So this action is action of one i, given what that it is in that state, becomes equal to what? Some kernel function, so some constant k. Now k is by q of updated state action transition. And this will hold true for all what? j. So we actually summing this up over j. Right? So this is what we have. And um, what you should understand is, in this case, we are not actually computing the Q of what the probability is not actually the K into this. Rather, it is what? K raised to power what? The Q value of what? State action transition upon K raised to power Q value of this, right? Provided that that is summed up over instances of J. Now we now say that P of A of I given S is the probability of selecting an action given that that, act, that agent is in a particular state, right? So the probability of A given S is the probability of selecting that action given that that agent is in a particular state. And that makes sense. And this K must be greater than zero, which is a constant that determines how strongly the selection favors the action with high Q value. So this might use it, we might actually do the Called, uh, term it as what a bias, right? So that K, you might call it as a bias, which is a constant value that actually determines how strongly the selection favors actions with high Q values. And with this, we are done with that. 